Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I am Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again that we can study your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Please grant us the Holy Spirit that he might guide us into all truth and show us things to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All righty. So why don't we um, go ahead and try to analyze this uh, mighty angel. There is a mighty angel in chapter 10 of Revelation that it is described of us coming down from heaven. And every time that we read in the Bible that a mighty angel is coming, obviously it's very important. Mm -hmm. It has to be some present truth messages that needs to be given uh, to humanity. And can, do you want to read it, please, Patrick? Okay, uh, Revelation 10, verse 1. And this yeah. verse is coming right after the sixth trumpet that right. we saw had a fulfillment in 1840. Mm. And that's why, so we concluded, we, we went on already of chapter 9, yeah. and that's why we're coming now. So we're getting into the beginning of trumpet number 7. Okay. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. And so... After the sixth trumpet, John says, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Mm. The description of this mighty angel is very interesting, no? Yeah. Should be interesting. Let's, let's, look at it. let's look at his description for a moment. Right. It says, first of all, his face was as it were the sun. Mm. Question, whose face is as a, is the sun? Remember, Revelation is speaking in symbols. Right. So we need to figure out who, whose face is as the sun. Can Revelation tell us? Go with me to Revelation 1, and let's look at verses, chap, verse 1, chapter 1, and let's look at verses uh, 12 through 16 for a moment. The Bible says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girded about with paps and a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, mm. and his feet like unto fine brass, as if burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now mark verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. What? Whose countenance is as the sun shineth in his strength? Jesus this Christ. This is Jesus who is the height, and he's standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, showing his work as high priest is being mentioned here as well. His work as priest. This is sanctuary language. But going on, the Bible says here that his face was as it were the sun right. shineth in his strength. Okay. And if we would go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 and 2. Patrick, you can read that for us. Matthew 17, 1 and 2. Okay, this was the time of Christ's transfiguration on the mount. And it says, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Notice again, his face, talking about Jesus' face, shined as the sun and was white as what? Light. But now wait a minute. Jesus' is face is as the sun. So is it is safe for us to understand that Jesus is also called something in the Bible? Go with me to Malachi 4.2. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Pastor, can you read that for us? 4, Malachi 4.2, Malachi. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Malachi. Last book of the Old Testament. 4.2. Yes. Okay, it says the Word of God says right there, Malachi, chapter 4, verse 2. It says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness 
arise with healing in his wind, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. So the son of righteousness. Right. Notice righteous. that Jesus is called the son of righteousness. Mm. So who is this mighty angel that's coming down from heaven? So, so obviously it's Jesus. This Christ. mighty angel is Jesus, the son of righteousness. Okay. The king, the prince of glory, the redeemer of the world. So let's see why, what, what this message was, why this message was so important that Jesus himself came down to give it to John. In, in verse 2. Uh, uh, Brother Patrick. You, 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 got one, you got one thing you need to pay attention to right quick okay, in there. Okay, okay. And in, Re in Revelation 10, 1, and that is okay. that what Jesus has on declares what will be the message that mm. he will give. Okay. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 10. Look in here at verse 1. Okay. He said he was clothed oh. with a cloud. Okay. Now, before we go any further, what does it mean for Jesus to be clothed? Because everything he has on is going to identify the teachings that's going to come out the message of the three angels for present truth. Okay. Let's take a look together. Okay. What does it mean to be clothed? All right. Before I go to cloud, I just want to know what does it mean for Jesus to be clothed? There's okay. two things. First of all, in Revelation chapter 1, we saw Jesus dressed in what? He was clothed with a garment down to his foot, mm -hmm. right? Right. And he was girded about with paps and a golden girdle. Mm -hmm. This is the dress of a priest. How did God say in his word that he would clothe priests? Go with me to Psalms 132. And uh, Patrick, can you read verse 16 for us? Psalm 132, mm -hmm. verse 16 mm -hmm. says, 132. I, yeah. I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall Shout aloud for joy. It will clothe her priest with what? Salvation. What is Jesus standing in the midst of? The seven candlesticks, but he's clothed as a what? Priest. Mm -hmm. And the garment clothed down to his foot is the garment of the priest. Therefore, but he's clothed with what? The, the clothing is a symbol of him being clothed with what? Salvation. That also shows Jesus dressing very modestly. Huh, yes, Jesus <laughs> dressing very modestly, yes. But clothed with what? Salvation. What is salvation, by the way? Matthew one twenty one. Pastor, can you read it for us? One twenty one. Matthew one twenty one. What is salvation? Mm. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he and shall save his people from their sins. From their right. sins. Okay. So, so wait a minute. Let's make this clear, because we're living in a time when people are hearing different ministers, and many ministers are letting people letting people believe that they can be saved in sin, and they are condoning sin in the churches, and this is not the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation is to deliver you from sin Amen. and restore you into the image of God. Amen. Not let you stay in sin and the image of God be marred in you and then you face, you believe you're going to be saved and at the end you find yourself lost and Jesus say, I don't know you anymore. Wow. Mm. Matthew 7, 21 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? But I say, and I will say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worked what? Iniquity. iniquity yes. That's yes. sin. That's transgression. That's repeated mm. transgression mm. of God's law. Uh, you mean then, uh, uh, if I have been turning my life to Jesus, let's say ten years ago or twenty years ago, I turned my life to Jesus. Uh, Jesus um, is not going to count my surrendering to Him that I did twenty years ago. If you continue in sin. While professing Christ, you have the form of godliness and deny the power. Mm. The Bible said from such turn away. But a form of godliness means you do not have the Holy Spirit in your life, and nor will you bear the fruits of the Spirit, giving evidence that you have been born again. The Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 7, by their fruits mm. ye shall know them. And he's not talking about apples and oranges. He's talking about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Mm. I mean, the reason I brought this to you is because... It's be it is becoming more and more popular nowadays. They believe that once you were saved, in, in per quotations, I should have put it, saved, you're always going to be safe. So mm -hmm. obviously that is a, one of those teachings that had been introduced in this end time as a fulfillment of what Paul saw that in the latter days, Satan was going to deceive many with doctrines of the, you know, from, from is, the evil. Is, is, that, is, is it possible that we can, is that really a doctrinal teaching from the Bible? That you can, once you're saved, you're going to be always saved? Hmm. Did not the Apostle Paul say, 
He said, lest I preach to others and I myself be a castaway. Right, now, right. Paul, was a, Paul was a saved man. Amen. He had been transformed, knocked mm -hmm. off his horse on the way to Damascus. Mm -hmm. But when Paul, later, as Paul continued to write his epistles, he made it very clear that he himself had to be watching and praying. He himself had to be sure he was going to be right with God, lest while he preached to others, he himself become a castaway, meaning that he would lose his soul. Amen. So it, it's clear. I believe that uh, I, I, I just hope and pray that our friends out there will know that that teaching is not biblical, even though it's becoming more and more popular. I know it is very, very pleasant to the ear of, of the fleshly, you know, the, for the flesh, because I have found people even caught up in, 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 in sins, but they say, no, no, my sins are not counted anymore because I already surrendered my life, you know, so many years or whatever. I'm, I'm a saved, I'm a born again man. Well, if you are a born again man, Paul also said that you are going to be a new creature. Second Corinthians 5.17. Yes. So we're going to be in the spirit, not in the flesh. But, yes. in, Eze but in Ezekiel 33.13, 30, mm, yes. the Bible tells us the state of a righteous man that turns from his righteousness. Right. Or a man that's saved. Oh, it that's a good here, point too. When I say to the righteous that, that he shall surely live, if he trust in his own righteousness mm -hmm. and commit iniquity, this is transgression, right. all his righteousness shall not be remembered, uh -huh. but for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. So, yes. There's another aspect to that too, because many believe that we are born sinners, that mm. we are guilty of Adam's sin at birth, and that by nature we're sinners, we'll always be sinful and and we can't change that until Jesus comes the second time. We are not going to overcome sin, as they teach. Never in our life. Yeah. That's, my brother Patrick, that's the reason that in the popular church, they baptize children. Yes. Because they say, well, we need to, the parents are responsible to bring the child to us. And we, which is not a baptismal, uh, but, but to them, they, they claim you, that we, the child is being baptized. Now, you're talking about babies. Uh, babies, 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 baptized yeah. babies. I mean, here, right? being rinsed with the water. They don't have... Spread with the, sprinkled with the water. They have not had the ability yeah. to reason or to think right. or to make a sound choice of their own. Right, right, it's right. It's very important. Okay, yeah. Ezekiel 18.20 says, The soul that sinneth, mm -hmm. it shall die. Mm -hmm. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. That is a, a, a good point. Uh, yes. But if the righteous man turn from his righteousness to commit iniquity, mm -hmm. he shall die in his iniquity, and in all his righteousness will not be remembered. Remember that. Wow. That's very uh, clear. Uh, we're going to continue with this uh, topic on uh, Revelation chapter 10. Uh, watch this, and we're going to be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Pastor Berry. I just want to bring back the idea to, just to give the Bible text on that text about castaway. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, it says, But I keep under my I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, oh. I myself should be a castaway. Okay. Could, go I, ahead. could I also read Jude? Yeah, you can go ahead. Three, Jude 5 and 6. 
where he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first state, estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So God, what? He took the... Even the angels in heaven who were saved there right. lost their salvation. Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. One third of the angels. All right, let's go back. So, but the work of Jesus, when he was presenting himself clothed, uh, yes. chapter 10. I, I want to go back and give you one more. We've talked about the idea he was clothed with salvation. Right. And that means deliverance from sin. And that's Amen. why we got into this issue about that's right. being lost. And we mentioned even Matthew 121. Right, but now let's go now to first uh, for, uh, Psalms 132. And let's look here at verse 9 for a moment, if I'm not mistaken, because I want to show you again that we're talking about what he's clothed with. Yes. Symbolism Psalms, there. The Psalms symbolism what? There, Psalms 132. 132. Verse 9. The Bible Psalms tells us again. Uh, Patrick, you can read it for us. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Again, Ooh. Jesus is clothed as a priest, but the clothing he has on is a symbol of what? Salvation, Salvation. and righteousness. We can confirm that in Isaiah 61.10. Go with me to Isaiah 61.10. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, the Bible says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation and has covered me with a robe of righteousness. I want to just stop right there for a moment. Amen. Now notice, clothed with what? Garments of what? Salvation, salvation and righteousness. So let's stop for a moment. The mighty angel, when he comes down, he will have a message on salvation. Mm. And he will have a message on righteousness. Mm. Is this message of salvation and righteousness connected to the gospel? Of course. You sure? Yeah. All right, let's go to yeah. Romans chapter 1, yeah. Yeah. verse 16 and 17. And let's see if the message of salvation and righteousness are found in the message, which is known as the of, gospel of or the everlasting gospel, if see, you want to go. See, Martin Luther understood this, this yeah. point. Okay, all right. He very clearly. Okay. Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 1, yeah. 16, For yeah, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right. for it is the power of God unto salvation Amen. to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for as is written, the just shall live by faith. Right. Right. So notice here you have what in this? You have salvation, deliverance from sin, and you have righteousness. And we already know from previous uh, studies. From studies that the righteousness here is talking about the righteousness of Christ. Right. Uh, All right. Let, let, let me uh, mention it again. I should have mention it all the time uh, in every program. Uh, we have been uh, putting all these programs on the website, eternalgospel.com. You can go and click to either television programs, if you want to see this, you know, view these programs, or go to radio programs and hear the radio programs through national radio pro stations. So you can go up at your spare time and follow up because we cannot bring everything in every program over here. Yes. So what you just mentioned, uh, it's important because uh, what Martin Luther understood, yes, the gospel is righteousness by faith. But yes. we study in previous program where you can find them over there on our website that righteousness is what? All the commandments of oh, God. That's right. Righteousness, righteousness is being obedience to God. It's yes. the character of God in, fact, in our life. In fact, if we if, just, to, just to point that out, what you <laughs> said about obedience, look at Romans 6.16. Hold it before we go. Uh -huh. I oh, just want to bring out the thought that the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God to turn us from sin to in righteousness. righteousness. Right. From disobedience to obedience. Yeah. Our own willpower is weak. We cannot overcome sin in our, in our own strength. Sin's power keeps us in bondage. Mm. We want to do good, but we can't. Mm. And we try and try and try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. But we need the power of God, and the power of God is found in the gospel and in the exceeding precious promises that are given unto us, whereby we might be partakers of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1 verse 4. And when our faith grabs hold of the strength and power of God, and we believe it without feeling anything, and accept it into our life, 
we receive the power to be, so that His righteousness can be revealed Amen. from faith to faith. Amen. So the result of us to receive the righteousness by faith, it will be t turning all of us into being a disobedient to an obedient man or a woman, prepare, being prepared to be translated to heaven. Amen. Right, that's why we got, that's why I said, let's look at Romans 6, 16, to see if righteousness of God leads to obedience or, or, re, or disobedience to the law. In Romans 6, 16, the Bible says very clearly, uh, and when I say law, I'm not talking about it from a legalistic standpoint. I'm saying law in the sense of obedience to God, because if you love Jesus, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. All right, but now look here in uh, Romans 6, 16, the Bible says, know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. righteousness. So here we find that obedience is connected to what? Righteousness. righteousness. And obedience unto righteousness leads to leads actually to sanctification and belief in the truth. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. So that's what Jesus. Uh, this is what he's clothed with. Right. This is his clothed with, and that. Is, so he he was by his own attire. By his own clothing, he was he wanted he was trying to give us a message already. Yes, right? the message of the everlasting mm -hmm. gospel will carry the message of salvation. Mm -hmm. It's the last message of mercy to a perishing world. The everlasting gospel will carry the message of the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, going on, it says here he's clothed with a cloud in right. Revelation ten one. Clothed right. with a cloud. Now we have a cloud message coming. You know any cloud messages? Yes, Revelation 1 7. Okay, let's go to Revelation 1 7. Let's get a cloud message for a moment. Can you read it, Brother Patrick, please? Because really? it's a very important. By, by the way, this is one of the beliefs that this, uh, make a distinction between us as Seventh day Adventist believers uh, from the rest of the you know Christianity. Uh, of many Christian churches out there. Well, many because Christians. we do believe mm -hmm. that Christ is going to come and every eye will see him. But uh, can you read it, please? Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1, verse 7. How many eyes will see him? Every eye shall see him. Uh, and now they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Do you know that there's a good people out there that teach that, yes, only every eye is spiritual. With a spiritual eye, mm. because they say, uh, you know, they teach a group of nice people. They go knock on doors too, like we knock on doors. They go knocking on the doors, saying that not everybody is going to see Jesus because Jesus already came in 1914. Mm. So, 25, 20. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, all the eyes are going to sin, even the one. Those one that pierce him. Now, those those wicked men that kill Jesus, do they have any spiritual eye? No. Obviously not. No. But everybody's gonna see Jesus when he comes. I want to point out one thing. The Bible said he come up with clouds. Revelation again is written in symbols. Right. What are clouds representing? Go with me to uh, Psalms 104 3. Let's look at what clouds represent. The Bible says, who layeth his beams of his chambers in the waters who make up the clouds, his chariots. Mm. So clouds are a symbol of chariots. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is coming in clouds, so he's coming in chariots. Mm -hmm. But what are chariots? Look at Psalm 68, 17. Psalms chapter 68, verse 17. The Bible says here, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And the Lord is among them as in Sinai. Mm. So wait a minute. Behold, he cometh in clouds, twenty thousand, even thousands of angels, and every eye shall see him. Mm -hmm. So the Bible shows that Jesus' coming is literal and visible. Amen. The whole world will witness the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible makes it very plain that when he comes, he's coming with ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands of angels across the sky. Amen. So if somebody will say to us that Jesus will come in a secret way, sneaking kind of, and some people will disappear all of a sudden, should we believe that? What did Jesus say about that? Yeah. 
Jesus makes it very plain in Matthew mm-hmm. chapter 24. Mm-hmm. He gives a scenario of a situation. The Bible says here, there shall arise false Christs and false prophets mm. and shall show great signs and wonders in so much as if possible, they will deceive the very elect. Mm. Behold, Jesus said, I told you before. Verse 26 says, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, mm. go not forth. Behold, he is in secret chamber, mm. believe it not. Now, Jesus also shows very clearly that there will be those who would try to say that Jesus is some private place and we need to go there. Or even secret chamber also means seance chamber because there are people that believe they can contact God through seances. Just like you believe you can contact the dead. And the Bible says, the Bible condemns. But in Psalms 50, the question is, will the coming of Christ be a silent affair? And that's then look what the Bible says in Psalms 50. Psalms 50 says here, um, let me give you this one, verse well, three. Mm-hmm. Our God shall what? Come mm-hmm. and not keep silent. I was just thinking about First Thessalonians, also silence. Ch- chapter mm-hmm. four, uh-huh. verse 13 and on. Can you read it, Patrick, please? Maybe because I know there's so many people out there, good people, good Christians, that they, they just following this teaching because they have been you know, kind of a blind, you know, and, and like, go ahead, read it, please. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. He's going to come with a shout. He's going to come with trumpet. Have you heard trumpets? Yeah, very loud and <laughs> have you Have you heard sounds of trumpets out there? You don't want to hear it the first thing in the morning. <laughs> right, <laughs> especially when you are. But that will be the first thing we will hear in the morning. That's what I'm saying. So uh, the, 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 the teaching, the theory that Jesus is going to come in the cloud, it, go, it goes against the description that the Bible is giving of this mighty angel, hmm. which is Jesus himself bringing a special message that we will see that if all of us will be receiving those present truth messages found in the book, in this chapter, and the chapter to the follow, will be found ready to be translated when Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven. This is our desire. This is our prayer. In the meantime, may the Lord bless each one of us. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.